Sometimes we're reluctant to try new things because it can be difficult to overcome fear of the unknown. But when you challenge yourself, you reap the rewards. Let me share a secret recipe. Discover an ingredient that fires your imagination. Choose other flavors to match. Find the best way to cook them. My secret recipe? Cooking without a recipe. Gabe's heading off for a sleepover, so I'm jumping in and making a special candlelit dinner for Rachel and I, complete with her all-time favorite dessert. Tonight, it's just the two of us. I think creme brulee is the world's most perfect dessert that doesn't include chocolate. It's also one of the world's most popular restaurant desserts, but you know what? You can order it up at home too. Just pick a special day with somebody special that you want to impress and then go for it. You can do it too. But since man doesn't live on sweets alone, I do have a little salmon today as well. But you know what, I'll get to this later because right now I'm a pastry chef at home. Good creme brulee is made from four simple ingredients. Milk, cream, eggs, two, four, six, and eight, and sugar. I mean, just look at these ingredients. They're all simple, they're all friendly, they're all familiar. You really can make this at home. A good creme brulee is also made from a simple basic ratio. Two cups of milk, and one cup of cream, eight eggs, eight egg yolks actually, but it's easy to get those yolks out, and one cup of sugar. I begin by making a simple caramel, and to do that, just take your cup of sugar, pour it right into the middle of your pot, make a pile of sorts, and then add a splash of water around the outside of the sugar. And start cooking. So in a moment or two, the water and the sugar are going to start to dissolve together. They're going to form a simple syrup. The sugar will then start to rise further in temperature and start to caramelize. So let's get those egg yolks ready. Creme brulee doesn't rely on the egg white because the egg white tends to souffle. It tends to poof up in the oven. The egg yolk, on the other hand, acts like a glue. It sort of holds the works together. Check out this sugar here. I can see it's just starting to brown now. At this point, when you see the first hints of color, just start to gently swirl the pan a little bit. You want to make sure that that sugar colors evenly. So when you're making a caramel, you've got to be ready to shock the caramel. That is, to stop it from cooking immediately as soon as it hits the color you're looking for. So what I mean is, have something standing by to add to it. Something cold, like cream and milk. Because even if I take this off the heat, it's going to continue to rise in temperature, it'll burn, and I definitely don't want that to happen. At this point, I'll add all the cream and milk. Now this caramel step is purely optional. You could simply add the milk, cream, and plain white sugar to the pan, bring it up to the heat, and you'd make a beautiful creme brulee. But I like the extra flavor that it adds. Now here's another ingredient that's not optional, vanilla extract. I think of it as the salt of the pastry kitchen, because just like salt, it takes all the other flavors that it's hanging out with and brings out their best. Now, if I took these egg yolks and dumped them into that hot milk and cream right now, they would immediately set up into these little yellow balls, and I definitely don't want that to happen. So instead, what I have to do is temper them into the hot milk. 
For that, I need a ladle and a whisk. Basically, what I want to do is gradually raise the heat of the egg yolks. As soon as it starts to warm up, as soon as those egg yolks start to get hot, you're basically done. So at this point, I can stir them into the rest of the liquid. So, my base is done. The next step is to refrigerate it. If you take the time to refrigerate the base, when it comes time to bake off your creme brulees, you'll just get a creamier texture. They'll taste better. Love this stuff. I am on a roll now. I've got Rachel's favorite wine. I've got her favorite dessert. But I still gotta think about that salmon. Gabe's at a sleepover, so I'm planning a little candlelit soiree for Rachel and I, complete with her favorite dessert, creme brulee. It's one of those things in life that at first seems complicated, but once you get to know it, it's actually rather friendly. I began with simple cream, milk, and eggs, and for an extra flavor boost, I transformed the base's sugar into caramel. Then I cooled the base down, so that now I can start heating it up. Which I know sounds crazy, but by taking the time to cool it down, I'm giving the egg yolks time to start doing their job. Ultimately, they're the glue that's gonna set the cream and milk into that perfect, well, creamy texture. Now, because of the egg yolks in the mix, you're going to need a water bath. I'm worried that the mixture might souffle a bit. By insulating these baking dishes with some boiling water, I'm going to encourage the temperature to stay nice and even. Fill your dishes up, but not all the way to the top. Almost all the way to the top. Now here's a tip. It's a lot easier to transfer that pan into the oven and then fill it with boiling water. Add enough water so that the level of the hot water is equal to the level of the custard base inside the baking dishes. Now this oven is set to 325 degrees. That's the exact temperature it takes to maintain simmering water within an oven. We're good to go. Let's see, what can I garnish these with? That texture is so seductive. But creme brulee is all about crisp. So how about something else crisp? A crisp garnish, you know, crisp with crisp. Let's see, oh yeah, I do have some apple chips. These are nice and crisp, and apples definitely go with caramel. Apple chips are a wonderful all-purpose garnish for just about any dessert. For delightful crunch and bright apple flavor, Begin with a simple syrup of equal parts sugar and water simmered together until dissolved. Slice crisp Granny Smith apples as thinly as possible, then soak them in the syrup for at least 20 minutes or even overnight. Arrange them on a non-stick baking surface, then gently bake them in a 325 degree oven for about 20 minutes or so. Once they've lightly browned, they're done. As they cool, the sugar they've absorbed will harden and the apple slices will magically turn into crisp apple chips. Nice and crisp. These are gonna go great with Rachel's favorite dessert. In fact, apples would go great with her favorite vegetable too, which I just happen to have standing by, fennel. I know. I'll make an apple fennel salad, which I've never actually made before, but that's not going to stop me. I love the crisp flavor of fennel, so I'll shred it, and then I'll make a dressing out of the apples. And to do that, I'm going to need some liquid in there to soften these apples up. 
cider vinegar, and a premium olive oil. A cup or so of cider vinegar, brown sugar, classic with apples. Now when I think vinaigrette, I always think of mustard, grainy mustard. Big heaping spoonful of that. So at this point, I guess I want to just simmer that until the apples soften. So I probably should throw a lid on. I think what I'll do is when all that softens, I'll puree the oil in at the last second. So I've actually got a minute now. These fronds, they've got lots of flavor. So I think I'll keep some of those. And now I'll just slice these as thinly as I can. Now, what else can I add to this? I'm gonna have that apple vinaigrette. Yeah, I might as well add some apple to the fennel too. I've got plenty of Granny Smiths today. Maybe I'll just slice them right in. You know what, as I look at it, I don't need to add anything else to it. Fennel, apple, simple is best. How's this doing? Oh yeah, looking good. It's exactly what I'm looking for. Those apples are nice and soft. So now all I have to do is puree this with the oil and I'm gonna have a dressing. To me, a salad is always something that's changing, that's evolving. I never make salads the same way twice anyway, so this is perfect for me. Toss her up. got so excited making that salad, I almost forgot about the salmon. Gabe's gone for the night, so Rachel and I are gonna warm up with a little dinner for two. In fact, I'm already knee-deep in caramel, with her favorite dessert, creme brulee. The base is made from cream, milk, and eggs, with caramelized sugar added to jazz up the flavor. I also improvised a simple fennel apple salad. These have been in the oven for about 30 minutes or so, and they look like they're almost done. So what I'm looking for is that distinctive jiggle that shows me they've set up, and I'm seeing it, they're done. You know, I actually developed this recipe in the same restaurant where I first met Rachel. You could say that this recipe played an important part in our courtship. Maybe that's why these are her favorite desserts. Okay, the next step is to kick these creme brulees into high gear with a thin, crispy crust. And for that, I'm gonna need some sugar. But which sugar? White sugar, brown sugar, powdered sugar, raw sugar, turbinado sugar, which sugar? Did you know that sugar is actually made from sunlight? It's true, sugar is how plants capture, create, and store energy. And it's the only thing that humans are born with an instinctive craving for which is probably why we've created so many different kinds of sugar. True brown sugar, like turbinado or demerara, is made from tropical sugar cane. In fact, all brown sugar contains a touch of flavorful sugar cane molasses. Most North American white sugar is made from sugar beets, but since sugar beet molasses is harshly flavored, efficient refining is needed to scrub out that brown flavor to yield pure, bland white sugar. Taken a step further, icing sugar is basically white sugar ground into a powder. Interestingly enough, what we think of as brown sugar is actually white sugar beet sugar with a touch of sugar cane molasses added for color and flavor. So which sugar should you choose? Well, it's really a matter of taste. White sugar is perfect when you want to add sweetness but not flavor which is why as a flavor junkie, I tend to choose brown sugars first. Why not add sweetness and flavor?
I've chosen coarse sugar because when the time comes, coarse sugar is going to give me a thicker crust, and a thicker crust means more crispy goodness. But these aren't ready yet. I'm going to refrigerate them for a while, and that'll give them a chance to set up a bit, a chance for their creamy goodness to fully develop. Let's see, I need something fast, simple, and sexy. I need dinner for two in a hurry. The clock is ticking. What's it gonna be? I know, something fancy. But easy, too. Pot steamed salmon. I can have this ready in under five minutes. Check this out. I'm gonna need a little orange juice, some red onion, some more of that tasty olive oil. And here's how I do it. I'm going to steam the salmon right here in these pots, and then I'm going to serve them in the exact same pots. This will be cool. Okay, big splash of orange juice. I'm actually going to start reducing that orange juice down right now. Let's get an onion into that too. And now I'll add a big splash of olive oil to each one. So what else can I add to this? A little more flavor. Papers, perfect. So I'll just put a spoonful or so into each one. And of course, I'm gonna need a little bit of salt and pepper. So now all I have to do is wait for this liquid to reduce down for all those flavors to concentrate. And then I'll simply slap the salmon right in, add the lid, cook them for five minutes, and I'm back on track. So let's get this salmon ready. I think this time I'm gonna take the salmon skin off. If I was grilling it, this would get nice and crispy, but I'm not. I'm using a wet method. It's not the most appetizing stuff. I think I'll cut it right off. So that's what I'm looking for. You can see that the flavors have intensified, that they've concentrated. Now it's time to add the salmon. There we go. Lid on. Turn them down a notch, and in just a few minutes, those salmon are done. I just know these are gonna be a hit, but what I'm really looking forward to, well, let's put it this way. I don't get to use a blowtorch in my kitchen every day. You know, I've really enjoyed myself today because when you're a cook, nothing beats cooking for somebody else. Rachel and I are about to enjoy a special romantic candlelit dinner for two, complete with a brand new salad. I've never actually made this before, fennel apple salad. Now, I saved the fennel leaves, the fronds, for the last second. I'm going to toss them in now, and that way they're going to be nice and green when I serve this salad. I can't wait to taste this. Go. It's a special night, so I'm actually going to plate things up this evening a la restaurant. Okay, there's a nice salad for us. And now for the pot steamed salmon. Check this out. Oh boy, do those look good. These are going to rock. And I'm going to serve them in the pots. Very chic. Here we go. There's one for Rachel, one for me, and now for the star of the show, creme brulee. I've got three of them. I'll save one for Gabe tomorrow when he comes home. But for now, it's time to add the crispy crust to these two. And for that, I simply need coarse raw sugar and my favorite kitchen tool, a blowtorch. So, here's how you do it. Begin by sprinkling oh, a tablespoon or so of sugar right on top, just like this. And then just shake it around until it evenly coats the top. And knock any excess right off. You don't want too much. Just one thin coat is all it takes. You'll be able to see it. Okay, here we go. 
The key to using a blowtorch on a creme brulee is to keep it in constant motion. Never stop in one spot. There we go. Now for this one. As soon as that sugar cools down, it forms a thin, crispy crust. And speaking of thin and crispy, time for some apple chips. Here's what I'm thinking. That looks cool. I hope Rachel's impressed. You know, creme brulee is one of those things in life that at first seems complicated, but once you get to know it, it's actually quite simple. Hey, the kitchen is a great place to blast through the unknown into a world of familiar flavors and tasty treats. This is cooking for thrill seekers. To be honest, I ran out of time, so I fired orange juice, olive oil, red onions, and capers in, and then I just steamed it for like mm. three minutes flat, eh? Very nice. This is brand new. I have literally never made this salad before. It's nice with mustard. Look familiar? Mm-hmm. Nice apple chips. Oh, that's so good. I saved one for Gabe. I don't know if he's going to make it through the night, <laughs> though. <laughs> so you're going to keep me around? Mm-hmm. Cool. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Love you. Love you, too.